So let's verify the function f of x, 1 over 1 minus x quantity squared, agrees with the power series g of x equal to 1 plus 2x plus 3x squared plus 4x cubed on the interval from minus 1 to 1. Okay, for my method 1, if we're in the region minus 1 to 1, then we know if I have our geometric power series here, well, since our r in absolute value is less than 1, I can take this expression and rewrite it as 1 over 1 minus r, and here our r is just going to be an x. So that's just, first step is just rewriting things as a geometric power series as the result. Okay, I'm going to take derivative of both sides here. So the derivative of this is going to be, well, this is 1 minus x to the minus first power. So the minus 1 comes down. The exponent becomes a minus 2. And then chain rule says multiply by derivative of the inside, which is a minus 1. The minus signs cancel. I have a minus 2 in the exponent. So we're going to have a 2, a square in the bottom here. On this side, I could just take the derivative term by term. So we'll get 0, 1, 2x, 3x squared, 4x cubed, and we just follow it on out. So you notice this is going to agree with what we have here. So it's method one. Method two, a little bit more fast and loose, but it's sensible. I'm going to take our geometric power series and just multiply it by itself. So that'll give me my 1 over 1 minus x squared. So we just expand, I expand. And let's see what happens. If I take this 1, multiply it by the top, it's just rewriting that out again. I take this x, multiply it by the top. We're going to rewrite it, but now we're going to start with an x, and then every other term goes up exponent by 1. I multiply by x squared. Again, we lead with an x squared, and then we just move down, increasing ex each exponent by 1. And then finally, we'll do the x cubed, same idea. I add up down the column, so I'll get a 1, 2x, 3x squared, 4x cubed, and so on. So this agrees with my g of x. Method 3, let's just form the Maclaurin series and see what comes out. So for my f of x, we're looking at 1 minus x to the minus 2. So our rule is going to be the kth Taylor coefficient It's going to be given by f raised to the kth power, meaning take k derivatives, evaluate at 0, and then divide by k factorial. So what's going to happen? Let's go through what the derivatives of f look like. Well, what are we going to do? We're going to bring the exponent down. I'm going to subtract 1 off the exponent, and then I'm going to multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is a minus 1. So since we always have negative exponents, and we're always multiplying by a multi minus 1 on the inside, we're always going to have positive numbers on the outside. We'll also notice, as we keep bringing these exponents down, it's just going to be collecting to give us a factorial. So we'll have like here, this is going to go down as 2, then a 3, then a 4 is going to come down, then a 5, and so on. And then we also notice that we're also going to have our exponent as minus our number of times we're taking the derivative plus 2. So that's going to be my general formula for the derivative. Okay, we're only interested in the derivative at 0. So what's going to happen? Well, if I put 0 in here in any of these, exponents won't matter. We're just taking 1 to powers. So we're really only going to worry about these factorials. So let's go through a few of these. So for a0, what are we looking at? We're just going to put that into the function. Then we're going to divide by 0 factorial, which is just 1. So what comes out is a 1. For a1, we're going to take what we get out of the derivative, so that's going to be 2, and then we divide by 1 factorial, which is 1, so the answer is going to be a 2. Go to the next step, we take a2, I have a 3 factorial out in front when I put my 0 in, I'm going to divide by 2 factorial, I get a 3, and then if we just go to the kth one, a sub k, we see if I put 0 in here, I get k plus 1 factorial. Our rule says divide by k factorial, so our coefficient is going to just be k plus 1. Because remember, k plus 1 factorial is all the, the product of all the numbers from 1 to k plus 1. k factorial is all product of all the numbers from 1 to k. And when I put k plus 1 factorial over k factorial, 
The only thing that survives when we start canceling is the K plus one. So you'll notice one, two, three, one, two, three. So this is gonna agree with our original power series.